What's up, everyone? This is Kevin Bass of the DiosWars.com. I break down studies on health science so that you don't have to. Um, for this purpose of this video, we're going to be talking about lean muscle mass loss, lean mass loss, muscle mass loss in fasting. And I'm going to show using two studies. One is a a randomized controlled trial published in the Journal of the American Medical Association, Internal Medicine, and one is a meta-analysis of all available randomized controlled trials on intermittent fasting, time-restricted feeding, showing that uh, indeed time-restricted feeding, intermittent fasting produces no um, significant uh, benefit to health, but uh, produces a loss in lean mass or rather potentially that intermittent fasting produces a comparable uh, loss in weight to chronic calorie restriction, although that's uncertain, uh, but perhaps a comparable uh, loss in body weight as chronic calorie restriction, but produces greater lean mass than chronic calorie restriction. So in other words, if you're thinking about maintaining your muscle mass, it's a bad idea to be doing intermittent fasting. And this basically, this video piggybacks off of the last few videos that discussed um, some of uh, Dr. Huberman's bad recommendations with respect to intermittent fasting. And I'm now going to show in greater detail that these are the case in these separate videos. Uh, and I'm gonna explain certain aspects of the research on fasting that will allow you to then make a decision about whether or not you should use intermittent fasting or time restricted feeding for weight loss. And in this case, as I said, I'm mentioning lean mass. So let's get to it and talk about it. <clears throat> there, this is a randomized control trial. It's the largest, most rigorous randomized control trial on time restricted eating. They had two groups. Um, one group was consistent meal timing, CMT group. They're instructed to eat three structured meals per day. And then there was a time restricted eating group, which was instructed to eat, you know, whatever they want, how as much as they wanted from only an eight hour period between noon and 8 p.m. And then completely abstain from any eating from that 8 p.m. until noon the following day. And then just do that over the course of this 12 week randomized controlled trial. And this, again, was the largest one done. That's why it's published in JAMA Internal Medicine. And um, yeah, so the primary outcome was weight loss here. And then they had secondary outcomes of uh, changes in weight, fat mass, lean mass, fasting insulin, fasting glucose, hemoglobin, A1C levels, estimated energy intake, total energy expenditure, and resting energy expenditure. And in these 116 participants, there was um, no difference in the decrease in weight between the time restricted eating group and the consistent meal time groups so the time restricted eating groups all a negative you know a loss of 0.94 kilograms is about 2.2 pounds maybe about two pounds in this case precisely exactly about two pounds and then the cmt group lost uh, about 0.68 kilograms which is like i don't know like a pound and a half or or 1.6 1.7 pounds so the time restricted eating group over the course of 12 weeks lost like a little bit more than half a pound, uh, which was not statistically significant. There's no significant difference between the groups. Um, but interestingly, there was a significant difference in appendicular lean mass index uh, between the groups. So the time restricted eating group actually lost about, uh, I don't know, like a quarter of a pound of muscle, which is, uh, not okay. Sorry, it's not a quarter pound of muscle. It's a quarter pound of lean mass on the. Uh, um, it's appendicular lean mass, so it's arm, leg, lean mass. So in that that muscle, those muscle areas, in the lean areas of those areas, in the arms and the legs, it lost about a quarter of a pound over twelve weeks. So you can imagine, over the course of say a couple of years, that that loss in appendicular lean mass might be substantially more. And you might come, might fall down to a, quite a lean body mass as a result. There's no significant uh, changes in any of the other secondary outcomes within or between groups. There's no difference in estimated energy intake between groups. So 
what does this say? It says like, if you want to lose your muscle, but you don't want to lose additional fat mass, time restricted eating is a good idea. So in this case, eating, you know, feeding window from noon to eight. Yeah. If you want to do that, you're going to have less muscle mass, but probably not very much less fat. Uh, statistically insignificant amount of less fat, but statistically significant amount of less muscle mass. Is that what you want? But, okay, fine. Yeah, it's probably the best study on time restricted eating, although there is one about to be published in a few days that's going to be a banger. Um, as yet, this is the best and biggest study on time restricted eating to date. But, nonetheless, it might be a fluke. It could just be a random, uh, a random effect of the study, a chance event. So it may not be the case that time restricted eating actually causes more muscle mass loss and about the same fat mass loss. It, this just may be completely wrong. Well, so then let's go look at all the studies that have been conducted on this question. Does time restricted eating and all of the studies pulled together cause more muscle mass loss than other strategies like chronic calorie restriction or consistent meal timing? And does do you have the same body fat loss? That is to say, about the same body fat loss between the groups and no advantage of time restricted eating. Well, interestingly enough, there is a meta-analysis published in 2019 on this question. Now, it's important to note that this particular randomized control trial that I'm talking about right now, or I was just, just got done talking about, was published in 2020. This meta-analysis is published in 2019, meaning it doesn't involve or include the data from this particular randomized control trial. So it's on basically all the other major randomized control trials, except for the one-year gap period between this meta-analysis and this randomized control trial. It's just talking about all of those randomized control trials um, except basically, basically this particular randomized control trial I just talked about. So what do all the other ones say? Well, let's go just look at the conclusions. Um, eh, we can briefly look at some of the other things besides the conclusion. So they looked in five databases. Um, they looked at chronic calorie restriction versus intermittent fasting. Um, uh they looked at primary outcomes of weight, body fat, lean mass, waist circumference, hip circumference, and energy expenditure. Um, nine trials met the conclusion criteria for a total number of participants of about um, 782. Six comparing regular intermittent fasting versus continuous calorie restriction, and three comparing intensified intermittent fasting versus continuous. And intensified intermittent fasting was... Calorie restriction, cal calorie restriction interspersed with days of even lower calorie restriction. So, um, versus um, intermittent fasting was calorie restriction interspersed with days of weight maintenance or an ad libitum eating. So, there's two different kinds of trials, and they had uh, participants from each different kind of trial. Okay, so here's the here's the banger. Here's the kicker, man. This kind of intermittent fasting is actually doesn't look to be time restricted eating. It looks to be whole days where they're actually restricting calories, followed by days in which they're um, at maintenance, or days at which they're intensely restricting calories, followed by days in which they're restricting calories less. It's a diff slightly different paradigm. So it's not just like you're fasting for the day and then you're eating more in the evening, like time restricted eating. It is rather that um, you're you're having entire day-long periods in which you're having reduced calorie uh, intake. Okay, so it's a little bit different, yet nonetheless, we have the same outcome. Lean mass was significantly lower in the regular intermittent fasting versus continuous group. On the order, in this case, of almost a kilogram less of lean mass, okay? Uh, there was a low heterogeneity. Okay, well, it's important to say there, is, there were no differences found for the remaining outcomes for both comparisons. So no differences in body weight, no differences in fat mass, waist circumference, hip circumference, energy expenditure, none of these things. The only difference found was in lower lean mass. So that suggests that intermittent fasting is causing people to lose muscle but not lose additional weight. That's pretty bad. And it also suggests that people are losing less uh, body fat 
because if they're losing more muscle, but they're not losing more weight, that means they're losing less body fat to compensate for the greater amount of muscle that they're losing. That's pretty terrible. And again, this is a different, a slightly different paradigm than time restricted eating, but we're finding the same thing. When you restrict uh, the amount of food that you're eating in a certain period, like uh, when you almost don't eat almost anything for a certain period of time, and then you go back to eating normally, that seems to be quite bad for lean mass. And it doesn't seem to help with fat mass. And it doesn't matter what the intervention is, if it's uh, intensive or, or, or rather just on a, a day long basis, that is to say, if it's time restricted eating, where you're actually eating as much as you want during certain hours of the day, but you're just restricting for the other part of the day versus uh, if you're restricting for an entire day and then you eat the next day, both paradigms seem to be bad, but the longer the fasting period, the more the muscle loss. Okay, let's, uh, as indicated by this study, okay, let's look at the conclusions. This systematic review in obese and overweight individuals showed that regular intermittent fasting decreased lean mass compared to continuous dieting. There were no differences in effects for either intermittent versus continuous interventions across all other outcomes. In contrast to previous systematic reviews, the study suggests that lean mass is better preserved in continuous dieting compared to regular intermittent fasting. And there are other studies that show similar sorts of things. Uh, we're going to talk about those in the next video, but I just want to point out, if you have a long fasting period, you're going to lose more muscle. And why is this? It's very simple. Every time you eat food that refills essentially your, um, your energetic state, there's essentially maybe it's more complicated than this, but it essentially each meal refills your anabolic state. It, it fuels your, your growth state. And when you have a long period of time when you're not fueling your growth state, your, your anabolism, you're not fueling essentially your muscles through both calories and protein, there's independent mechanisms by which your muscles are supported in your muscle mass through both calories and protein. Um, they converge on ultimately the same uh, outcome, which is muscle protein synthesis and ultimately hypertrophy of the muscle. Uh, but each of these pathways need to be constantly fed on a regular basis or they'll turn off and you'll start catabolizing muscle because you will start drawing from your muscle the energy that you need to survive. And if you do this over and over and over and over again, over a long period of time, eventually that will eat away at your muscle and you'll have less muscle. Okay. So again, these studies found no benefit, no advantage, no advantage to intermittent fasting over chronic calorie restriction for weight loss, but they did find a negative, a downside to intermittent fasting in terms of your muscle mass loss is people really need to understand this because on the internet, it's often hyped that intermittent fasting is going to be some sort of panacea. It's going to allow people to gain muscle and lose fat and increase their metabolism. All this is pokey bullshit. It's total bullshit. It's going to increase their dopamine because they're blah, 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 blah. This is all made up bullshit. This has no basis in any of the evidence whatsoever. The overwhelming amount of evidence shows that intermittent fasting is not more effective than cal chronic calorie restriction. And it probably or almost certainly, okay, we can say it does. It absolutely does decrease your lean mass. For the reasons I just mentioned, we understand why that would be the case mechanistically. We understand that it actually shows up in the randomized controlled trials. And there are other conditions whenever you change your feeding windows, et cetera, et cetera, that I'm going to be talking about in the next video where this also happens and you lose lean mass for similar sorts of reasons. Um, but yeah, that's an established effect. So please understand that. And, and I hope you guys understand that people who are pushing intermittent fasting for muscle mass retention and, and body fat loss and some sort of special method, they're full of shit. Intermittent fasting doesn't do any of these things. This is a bunch of freaking bullshit. Okay. And we really need to follow the data so that we understand that and we don't fall prey to grifters on the internet who are making money by giving us bad information. How do they make money by giving us bad information? What if they say they're not making any money? They're actually just giving free information, but they're not. 
the like none of these people who are mass influencers who have a, a major platform and tens of thousands or millions of followers, none of them are doing this for free. They're all making a ton of money. They're all making a ton of money, and there's different ways of making the money and monetizing. But in many cases, these people are using these grand claims about these things that people want to hear about or be excited about. They're saying things that are not supported by evidence and therefore nobody else is saying them. So they're going to say them and they're acting very confident about it to sell something, to sell an idea to people, which then give, gets them following and gets them clout. And then it allows them to monetize in all sorts of different ways. Uh, you can monetize through speaking engagements, through um, supplement companies, through affiliations. So you can be affiliates for all sorts of different companies and mention that you use them. You can be an advertiser. So often these people are advertised for like Athletic Greens is like one of the companies that these people advertise for and have affiliations with. And these kinds of things make a lot of money. YouTube makes people a lot of money once you start getting enough views. So when people give out this quote unquote free information that's hyped and it's not based on evidence, they're not doing it out of their own goodwill. They're doing it because they're making money. And you have to understand that conflict of interest. If you say something new and novel and exciting and something nobody else is saying because it's not supported by the evidence, so like, that's why nobody else is saying it, then you get attention. That's why they're doing it. They're doing it so they get attention and they make money. That's how they get to make money. Okay, so don't fall prey to this crap. This is it's grifting. It's terrible. It's unethical. It should be illegal. This should be illegal. This kind of thing where people um, tell people false information about these different fasting paradigms. It should be illegal. So don't fall for it. And I'm trying to help you guys not fall for it. I'm going to go make another video about timing of the eat feeding window and explain what the current evidence says about that. <laughs> I have a cold, sorry, what the current evidence says about that. Thanks for watching. You can find me on TikTok, Instagram, uh, Twitter. You can, find me on, <coughs> you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on my podcast, The Kevin Bass Show, if that's if you're watching the YouTube. Uh, all the links are below in the description. Um, and then you, know, you can also, of course, find me on Patreon. I could use, you know, people to become my patrons. That would be very helpful for me because I have bills to pay just like everybody else. And I'm not a grifter, so I'm not making these super exciting claims that are then going to give me tons of followers. I'm telling the truth. Uh, and, and while I do make some money from this, it's not uh, always a whole lot. So if you could help out, uh, that would be awesome. And then just uh, it's patreon.com. And then my username there is Kevin in Bass, K-E-V-I-N, two N's. K-E-V-I-N-N-B-A-S-S. -S. That's me at Patreon. And if you do become a patron, which I'm having a, a, an increasing number of followers ever since I started doing this YouTube stuff, which is cool. It's like, that's much appreciated. I appreciate all you guys who do that. Uh, if you do become a patron, please, please, please send me a message on Instagram or Twitter. Uh, if you have my email, send me a message on email. And don't send messages on Patreon because I kind of ignore messages on Patreon most of the time. Uh, I just I have enough social media platforms to, to, to pay attention to. So please do it over Twitter or Instagram. Speaking of which, I know one of you guys sent me a message recently. I'm going to go check it out and try to respond because I know it was like one or two days ago. Um, yeah, but if you want to become a top tier uh, Patreon on Patreon, uh, it's $100 a month. And I'll talk to you for like 30, 45 minutes about anything you want to talk about uh, for 30, 45 minutes a month. And it's related to anything I talk about on these videos or anything I've written about over the last several years, I can go into more detail with you and uh, try to explain how it might apply to your particular situation. Cool. So yeah, do all that stuff. Click like, subscribe, all that stuff. Share this video because this helps to combat misinformation about health. And it's really important people know this stuff. Thanks for watching. Peace.